How to grow with eSports and be part of the Generation Z story. In its original form, some say eSports started back in the 1950s with computer scientist Alexander Shafto Douglas and the computer game Tic-Tac-Toe. The first multiplayer game was called Tennis for Two, way back in 1958, and in the 1960s the first eSport tournament was produced. In the 1970s, arcades and home consoles increased to drive the demand. In the 1980s, the first clan was formed, and now with the event of better technology and worldwide networks, the eSports space is well and truly on the map, making winning players millionaires overnight. So let's get back to the future. First off, let's start with a few key facts eSports. The industry experienced an unprecedented boom in 2020, in part to the coronavirus pandemic which caused the cancellation of many traditional sporting events and leagues. During an August 2020 survey among sports industry leaders worldwide, some 86.3% identified simulated esports as an industry with a very high potential to grow revenues. In 2020, esports was set to make $822.4 million in revenue from media rights and sponsorships, as reported on the Newsual platform. That's three quarters of the total $1.1 billion market. So, how do brands capitalize on esports to reach Generation Z? The esports industry has seen lots of sponsors come and go since its inception. Like most things in the field of marketing, it's all about knowing your target market. And to truly understand the esports generation, you have first got to understand the people you are trying to reach are the world's first truly digital native audience. The digital native generation typically spend a lot of time on Twitch and other social channels, typically consuming media from those sources opposed to traditional mainstream media sources. News from social influences often helps them form their opinions and views which are often regarded as trusted sources. So from a sponsorship perspective, it would be more advantageous to integrate a brand that talks to the lifestyle of the digital native generation and truly understanding what it is that makes sense for them. Brands trying to force products that have no relevance to their lifestyle at this moment of their life should not expect a big return. And eSport organizations need to educate brands about the Generation Z gamer ecosystem. Yes, clearly brands want to reach the younger demographic segment, but if your product does not resonate, it has nothing of the what's-in-it-for-me factor for them. So what does this mean for brands? Esport fans are closer to key players and content creators than they are in any other sport. Fans are able to interact with key players, they feel a more deeper connection with the community while they're streaming, practicing and training. This is one of the main drivers of a closer connected community is that they have a deeper connection to the key players than in another sports. As an example, can you imagine Messi tweeting you back saying thanks for joining? The chance of that happening is remote. But in eSports, the connection with key players happens all the time. You have to understand that the content that you make and the partnerships that you create has to be digital. One glaring fact is most involved in the eSports world are not like the youngsters back in the 70s and 80s who typically spent every hour of daylight outside. So for the most part, big brands that promote a more out-of-the-home aspiration could see less impact and ROI in the eSports space. As Generation Z spend their time mostly inside, it is clear from a number of sources they are less receptive to traditional forms of adverts which begs the question. What are the characteristics, behavior preferences, and how they differ perhaps to other audiences online? Brands know that these youngsters don't have the highest disposable income right now. However, they are banking on it that this will change in the future as the digital native generation get older and as the world's economy becomes more online and data-driven. People that are into gaming at a young age and hardcore gamers are more likely to go on to higher paid jobs. They're more likely to go on to have more disposable income. Brands need to be in it for the long term and not for the short term. Brands who want to be associated with eSports fans must embrace the fact they need to build those relationships over the long term. This means not looking for a short-term spike but actually take the long-term view. Multi-year deals are the only way to build brand relevance but not forgetting that fact your value proposition needs to be relevant now and in the future as the demographic grows older. Brands need to grasp the key of authenticity which will automatically drive decisions for anything in the future. As an example, car brands getting involved in eSports sponsorship. BMW didn't have a presence to speak of in eSports prior to the pandemic. Now BMW is one of the key players in eSports, giving team cars decked out in the team logo, and BMW's logo will be on their uniforms during gameplay, as well as heavily promoted via social media. Stefan Panikva, head of BMW brand experience shows and events at eSports is a way for us to reach Generation Z who aren't interested in us now, but there will come a time when they're ready to buy a car and we should be in their mind when they do. 
Mr. Penicfo went on to say, while we're taking things step by step, I'll admit that eSports will be a big footprint in our marketing strategy in the long term, he said. We don't see eSports as sponsorship activation. It's more a strategic communications channel. Clearly BMW understand traditional ads, run the risk of turning the eSports audience off to a brand as evidence shows the digital native generation has a hypersensitivity and aversion to ads. However, integrated content that supports and gives back to the community is more authentic. Brands who are looking for an immediate return who flood the market could get a spike, but then it's down to the internal marketing teams to be able to grow that brand loyalty themselves. However, investing in the long game with those content creators, it will pay off in the future, especially when traditional advertising doesn't really work with the esports fans. So, what's the cost of running an esports organization? Many have to absorb the cost of setup, which is a significant cost, to say the least, especially when recruiting top players as well as investing in signing influencers and launching an academy system. Some have spent a lot to establish their core business pillars, the role of social media and the, the growth of esports industry. Without question, social media has the ability to cut the gap and provide better access real time and everyone can interact with everyone. As an example, the commentators that are commentating matches are also talking on Twitter at the same time. Fans are interacting and getting involved in the broadcast real time. In contrast, if you are watching a Premier League football game or a Champions League game, you will never get the chance to have direct interaction and get your comments picked up by the commentators like you do with eSports. Giving the opportunity to be really involved in the game is key. Clearly, everyone also knows social has negative aspects as well, all of which players and fans need to take action through education and awareness. Many teams now have sports psychologists that are also work with content teams, helping them to deal with the negative aspects of social media. Are brands and organizations banking too much on influencers? Some esports organizations have made losses following investments in teams, content creators, and their new academy initiatives. Some have quickly expanded into major titles like Rocket League, Fortnite, Valorant, which comes at a significant cost when recruiting top players. All this is seen as an investment in establishing their core business pillars. While some are offering in the tens of millions to some of the big names on social media over multiple years as influences. The top Twitch streamers are reported to have a following bigger than some mainstream media services. As an example, Ninja has a following of around 16.9 million. A key takeaway for brands is the esports market is it is high maintenance for brands. However, if a brand is in it for the long term and is authentic in supporting the esports community, the audience will stick with brands. Providing brands go beyond the traditional logo exposure for a sponsorship. When esport first started, a lot of brands quickly grasped that first to market strategy but haven't seen what they want without fully understanding the community fully. Now eSports has evolved to the point that the European League of Legends is a franchise league where you have to be an established company to get in giving eSport a structure which provides a foundation for corporate sponsorship. Today's eSports is all about the long-term deal with long-term relationships.